Hi guys, we are here for my creative year for December and our two words for the year are, uh, words for the year, holy cow, <laughs> uh, word, our theme for the month is education and our challenge word is joyous. Um, and this being a holiday month, Christmas month if you celebrate it, um, Hanukkah, if you celebrate that, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. It's a month of holidays and spending time together as family and with those that you love. And um, boy, isn't that joyous. It's a thing to be joyous about. This month, I want to celebrate ooh, um, some um, family and traditions that are no longer uh, with me. Um, one being my dad's mom, my grandmother, Jenny. Um, she was, and the women in her family from way back were needlework artists. They made handmade lace, and um, this is my grandmother's collection of rosary making supplies that were found in her belongings when she passed away. Um, so we're going to be looking at some of those. Some old beads I got from a friend a long time ago, um, pearls. And I have some silk ribbon, silk, silk embroidery ribbon here, and this little piece of see what that is that's a piece of a potato bag <laughs> so we're going to use all these to do something that I've seen uh, online um, I it probably has a name I don't know what it is but I've seen different artists online do it where they just use something that's an open grid like this to weave different materials through the grid and create a piece of art. Now there are artists that do this on a very large scale and make large wall hangings. That's not what I'm shooting for. Let's see if this ribbon will fit through here. Yeah it will. I just want to make a little embellishment. Something I can turn later into a paper clip or um, put on a journal cover or something like that. So I'm going to take different colors of my um, silk embroidery ribbon here. Um, this is just a piece of scrap ribbon that was on the table. So I'm starting with that. It's kind of on the wide side, but that's okay. And this might be from, you know, sometimes when you buy a blouse, they have those straps inside that you're supposed to use to hang it up. I, and I never do. I always cut the ribbon off. That's probably what this is. <laughs> Um, and it's not about getting it flat in there, it's about um, having it wrinkly and textured. So I'm going to zoom in on what I'm doing, but I'm not necessarily going to, you're not going to see the bins, but you will see what I'm doing. And let's speed forward through the process and I'll be right back. Fully log in yet, let's hope. Um, and if you hear voices in the background, they are my friends Cindy Utter, Peg Robinson, and Vicki Brown. Um, I wanted to refilm this part of our... Um, video where um, my camera died and I was out of frame. So I took my little, I'm going to make another one. Um, so I took the little piece of potato bag, this little piece of netting, and you could use any kind of open weave plastic netting from potato bag, onion bag. Um, sometimes you get the little baby bell cheeses in the bags. I save all of them for use in mixed media. And then we're going to just weave the ribbon in and out of the spaces sort of at random and alternating spaces and rows I want to leave some loops on either side because I want like tails I'm gonna cut the loop but I want a little piece of ribbon there um, okay so keep weaving in and out all the way down your little piece of um, mesh and however big you decide you to, to do your piece. There's no right way or wrong way. You could use silk ribbon for this. You could use embroidery floss for this. You could use little strips of fabric for this. Um, there's no, the possibilities are endless. You could use the little pieces of wire. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to keep going, keep weaving. Am I in camera? Sort of. I'm going to keep weaving. Oops. Even a loop. See, we've got all these loops. And you can leave the loops as they are. 
or you could cut them either way. I don't think it would make any difference. And then we're going to take some scissors. Now these are some of my sewing or needlework scissors. They're sharper and less glue covered than these and they'll cut the ribbon a little easier. So we're going to just cut, I'm going to cut the loops again. You don't have to, you could leave the loops as loops if that's floats your boat, whatever works for you. And I may end up trimming that little piece, but for right now we're going to leave it. I'm going to lay it down on top of my piece of polar fleece. I'm going to take that same needle and some sewing thread. Thread the needle. I'm going to double it up and tie a knot. Okay, starting at the back, I'm going to come up through the back to the top corner. I'm not going to pull it all the way through before I go back through to the back. And I'm going to catch this little loop right here where the knot is, and I'm going to pull. So be patient because with all these little pieces of ribbon hanging out, it's going to get um, tangly. So just take your time. There's a little loop of thread at the back. There we go. All right, so once you have that, then I want you to just come back up through the front and just do running stitches. So go in, come out. They don't have to be the same size. They don't have to be eat and eat and even. You just want to tack your little piece of woven mesh down to the, the fabric that you're using for a base, in this case, polar fleece. And you're going to be sometimes going through the ribbon, sometimes going through the mesh, um, whatever it is. I can still hear them chatting in the background. How about you guys? Hang on. Uh, don't tell them, but I put them in the closet and close the door. <laughs> all right so we're going to keep doing that all the way around until we come back to the beginning place you'll notice how i'm holding the uh, ribbon threads under my thumb the ends and i'm doing it this way that just keeps things from getting tangled a little bit less so just kind of keep things use your fingers to keep things tucked out of the way you could if you um have trouble holding things out of the way use a binder clip or something you could also sew this on machine. I mean, you don't have to sew this by hand. You could glue it down too. You don't have to do any sewing. I like the sort of tradition of getting out the needle and thread sometimes. So I'm just gonna, we're back at the beginning, so I'm gonna go back down. And if that's the way all the, that you wanted to do, then you would just tie that off. I missed a loop. Um, I think like with the other one, I want to dig around in my grandmother's rosary bead box, which is here somewhere. Here we go. I do think there was another safety pin in here somewhere. If there isn't, I got plenty of them around the art room. Yep, so here's another safety pin and it actually has an angel on it, which I don't know if I want to leave that on there, but I do want to use the pin. I've got some more of these little plastic rosary beads, so I'm going to use some blue ones this time. Um, I do think I'm going to take this. Oh, this is actually a, um, what do you call it, knitting pin? I don't know if I can get these beads off. Nope, they're not coming off, so we're going to grab a different safety pin. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. My grandmother was very religious, in case you didn't get the idea, like by the fact that she made rosaries. How cute is that though? I might want to stick that on there. So, and we have a word sticking out here right on top that's so appropriate. 
And this is my jar of fabric words that I think I showed already in a clip. I'll have to edit this together so it makes some kind of sense. But how cute would that be? If we pinned this on. Or sewed this down. I could cut the pin part off and sew it down, which would be even better. I'm very tempted. Am I going to be able to get that off? Maybe. Let's get out some wire cutters and see. I have some old wire cutters. These I have some new ones I just got, but I don't want to use them for this because this might not work. It might ruin the wire cutters, but we're going to try it. We're going to just do this. Oh, yep, that came off came right off. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So we are going to stitch this down. I haven't tied my thread off yet again, as, as I said already, again, I haven't tied my thread off yet. So we're just using the same thread. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. Just leave it there for the moment. And I'll show you how to fix it. Let's see. Let's pull this back out again. All right. Let's get this stitched on. Make sure I'm in camera, in frame. So these could be embellishments, they could be little memory pieces, you could uh, make um, a banner sort of deal out of it that you hang out, hang around in your creative space with little messages of blessings and creativity, whatever floats your boat. Now because this piece um, of um, jewelry, this Mary and baby Jesus, is metal, behind it I'm going to put some E6000, if I can get it open. There, there we go. So we're going to put a little drop of E6000 back here. And that'll take a little bit to dry, but when it does dry, it'll stick it on there pretty well. And then we're gonna keep stitching around. And as we go around, I'm gonna probably stop at some point, which I think I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna grab some of these beads. I didn't remember um, at all that my grandmother um, made rosaries or anything. I knew she was a sewer, a seamstress, and um, she and my great-grandmother did a lot of hand work, um, tatting and that sort of thing, crochet and knitting. Um, but I didn't know anything about the rosary making supplies until she passed away and we found this box of stuff. And those are the kind of things that when somebody is gone, I like to keep and use and remember them with rather than a lots of other stuff, personally. Okay, one more bead I want to put on here, but let's get this tacked on first. And we're still going to fix the loop in the back. No, I didn't forget. Okay, I'm going to grab that. We're going to go back here. We have that loop, remember? Which we've tacked down a little bit. So we're going to, let's see if we can 
You can tie it in a knot if it's long enough, or you can like weave it into some other stitches, which I'm going to try to do. There we go. And just tack it down so it's not so loose on the back. My grandmother would be horrified, by the way, that the back is so messy. And honestly, probably that the front is messy. I don't think she'd get that either. I am going to tie this off just because I want to figure out where I want to put that word. I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to tie that off. I think I want the word at the bottom. I do think it needs a trim. These are, again, printed on fabric, which I think I do say in the next clip, and I've got to edit this so it makes some sense. Yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this right here at the bottom. Again, you could glue it on. I'm going to stitch it loosely, um, just with one stitch on each side up through the back, down through the front. Like that. Now it's a little tough to get the needle through the word even though because it's even though it's printed on fabric because the paper backing is still on there and I'm not going to take the paper backing off. I could but I'm not going to. The word is a bit more opaque with the paper backing on. The fabric it's printed on is a bit thin and this fabric I'm using for the back of this is kind of dark. There we go. And then we'll tie that off. And trim. have it. Now we have two of them. Shaky camera, sorry. Now we have two of them and hopefully you saw a little bit more of actually how to make these than you did the first time. So whatever you have, I want you to go forward and I want you to play and experiment. We're going to move on to the next clip. Okay, there's nothing like working on a project and being pleased with the results um, and nearly done and realizing the camera turned off and what it did catch you were out of frame. So that's a thing, holy cow. Anyway, this is what we have so far. So we have some, the woven ribbon in the potato bag. Then it's stitched down to this little piece of polar fleece which I received in Happy Mail. I used some bead, plastic beads from my grandmother's rosary making supplies. There was a safety pin in there that already had some beads hanging on it and I added a couple of medallions and some more beads and sewed that on. And I have another little idea because, you know, as if that's not enough. Hang on. It took me a minute to find where I put them away. <laughs> These are words from one of my digital downloads in my Etsy shop that I printed on fabric rather than printing them on paper or sticker paper. You can also print them on fabric. There is a video on how to do this. I'll try to find it and link it in the description below. Um, but basically you just iron a piece of plain cotton fabric or muslin to a freezer paper and then cut it to eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. Put it into your printer so that it prints on the fabric side. And when it comes out, um, spray it with some magnificative spray and then cut them out and then you're good to go. I want to put this up here. We have to give it a trim, it's too big. And I want to stitch it or glue it on, I'm not sure exactly. And I just spied some parts in my tray that maybe we might want to use. Okay. Alrighty, making handmade embellishments is something I love to do and I do frequently. I want to encourage you all to do the same and to use those parts and bits and pieces up that you have in your stash Oh yeah, I like that. 
like that. The thing is, do we want to put these on here? I don't know that I do. Maybe. All right, reading glasses time. Let's see if we can do this without having the camera turn off. Shall we? And I pulled out embroidery floss thinking I would use it, but I'm just using regular sewing thread. Um, I, uh, and a good size needle to stitch everything on. Basic hand sewing stitches, nothing fancy. I did weave all the ribbon into our little piece of potato bag first and then stitched that whole piece down. Then I used some basic stitches to sew the beads on and sew the safety pin on after I put the charms on. You can see the stitches for the safety pin. See? Basic, basic. I'm gonna put push these little pieces of ribbon up so that after we get the word on, they still are sticking up. And let's see about getting this word stitched on here. It's not going to have any um, stress on it, the word. You know, you're not going to have any weight on it, so you don't need to worry about stitching it five million times. So it's not like a buttonhole or anything. Just one little tack. And of course, you could glue it. We're mixed media artists. There's no right way or wrong way. I am just joyously celebrating some hand stitching I learned from my grandmother. I will say she'd be a little horrified at how messy the back is and that the pieces, she wouldn't understand it because she was all about very neat hand stitching. <laughs> I know you all know what I mean. You probably have grandmothers that were the same way. The word believe seems to really fit this piece and I kind of do want to put these on here somewhere. So let's see if we can tack them on too. These I might need to put a little glue underneath. Okay. Making sure the little extra bits are sticking out sort of randomly. I'm going to try to zoom in on the editing process so you all can see what I'm doing because as I'm filming this, I'm sure I'm too far away. I'm sorry I didn't get the rest of it on camera, but these things happen. I have three batteries. Who would have known I would have picked the one that was dead? Okay. One more. Let's see if I have just enough thread to get this other side tacked down. Maybe. Okay, I think so. Let's see if I can tie it on that. I'm going to grab a little bit of glue if I can get the lid open there we go and I'm going to just peel the fabric back a bit and stick some back here behind both plastic pieces just to sort of tack them there in place There we go. It'll dry, it'll be mostly hidden, and it, that will work. Now while it's drying, I will use a clip to hold it down um, while it's drying during the drying process. Um, and this is really cute, and this would be cute on a tag. You could do something like this and then cover a tag with it and make it something that you hang up in your art room. You could, um, of course, put it on a large piece of cardstock or a large wood base. 
and turn it into a paper clip. It could be something that decorates an art journal cover. There's a lot of things you can do with these sort of little hand uh, made embellishments. Um, I really like the idea of practicing your stitching, your embroidery um, on these small projects. You don't need to do a big one. And I also like the idea this month of you all going out and just trying something new. And if you don't know how to do it, for instance, um, the stitching came about because I'm currently fascinated by shibori embroidery and trans the transforming of fabric by shibori. And um, while I don't think I'll get too into it, it is very fascinating. And it is always a great thing to educate yourself in something new, to learn about a new craft technique or style, and see where it takes you. It may take you somewhere really interesting and developing little pieces or parts that you can use in your art and that take you to an interesting place in your work. You never know. I had a teacher recently of mine who is an oil painter and she's studying cold wax. I don't paint in oil. I don't generally work with cold wax, but it did take me down a path of finding a cold wax, cold wax that works with acrylic and using it in my art and using it in an interesting way. And I'm still working on the book. Um, called It's called Cold Wax and it's for oil painters. And then there's another one, acrylic painting for encaustic effects. I will link both in the description below. So I would love to see and hear what you guys are doing. Um, celebrate your art and your work and yourselves joyously and have a great holiday season. If you have any particular books, techniques, or art styles right now that are just, you're like me, and they're fascinating the crap out of you, I would love to hear about them. Leave something in the comments below, or better yet, if you're part of my creative year, leave it over there, let's start a conversation. So, for me, doing these mixed media style stitchery pieces, I'll be doing some with seed beads too, um, in the future for the next year. Um, so look for those. If you want to see what I'm doing on a regular basis and follow me on my social media, join my creative year or my other group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, support the free content here on YouTube or over there in the art Facebook groups um, by shopping in my Etsy shop or shopping on my Amazon affiliate site. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Click on the link tree list of links in the description below and you'll find all that stuff. I'm going to be doing more of this. I have a lot of beads. I have a lot of parts. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And I will be doing more of these little stitchery mixed media pieces because I am just totally hooked now and totally fascinated. I thought I might be before I got started with this to be all, to be very honest in all honesty. And I wasn't wrong. So anyway, <laughs> uh, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, the most important thing, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And by the way, it is December um, when you're seeing this, so happy holidays, and I hope you have a great one. That's it for right now. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.